Hey guys, the aim of this video is to work out the axial stress and axial strain on this column over here. So we're given four pieces of information. We're told that the column has a cross-sectional area of 20,000 mm squared and it has a compressive load of 600 kilonewtons. And we're also told that the column is made of two different materials because we can see that the elastic modulus at the top is different to the elastic modulus on the bottom. So the top is 12,000 MPa and the bottom is 10,000 MPa. So our first question is asking us what the axial stress is at any point in the top half of the column. So using the formula that is stress equals to force divided by area, we can see that the force is 600 kilonewtons, so 600, and the area is millimeters squared, which is 20,000. We're going to convert the force to newtons, so 10 to the power of 3, to keep units consistent. So our stress is 30 MPa. MPa is newtons on millimeter squared. Before we move on to question 2, let's look at question 3, which also asks us for the axial stress at any point in the bottom half of the column. So, some bit of theory here is that we're still using the formula that stress equals to F on A. So over here, the 600 kilonewtons applied to the column is actually applied throughout the entire column. And the area we're told is 20,000 mm squared. It doesn't seem to change throughout the column, so the column is constant in cross-sectional area. So the stress at the top is actually the same as the stress on the bottom half. So this is also 30 MPa. So if the cross-sectional area on the bottom half of the column was any different, the stress on the bottom would be different. Okay, let's go back to question 2, where it asks us to calculate the strain. So the formula for strain is small epsilon equals to stress on elastic modulus. So we worked out the stress was 30 MPa at the top half of the column, so this would be 30. And the elastic modulus we're given on the top half is 12,000. So if you calculate this, it would equal to 0 0.0025 or it can be expressed as 2500 microstrands. For question 4, we're still using the same formula, epsilon equals to stress on elastic modulus. The stress here is the bottom half, which is also 30 MPa. And the elastic modulus for the bottom half is given as 10,000 MPa. So you work this out, it equals to 0 0.0030 or 3,000 microstrands. So our last question, question 5, asks us to calculate the axial deformation of the column from the compressive force. So the axial deformation is another way of asking us to find the axial shortening of the column. So we represent axial shortening by a delta or triangle. So, so delta total equals to the deformation on the top plus the deformation at the bottom. And how we find these deformations is we look at the strain. So on the top, the strain was 0 0.025. And we multiply that by the top half length of the column, which is 5 meters. And the strain at the bottom of the column is 0 0.0030. And we multiply that by the length of the bottom of the column, which is also 5 meters. So if you calculate this, it would equal to 0 0.0275 meters. Or if you want to express in millimeters, you multiply it by 1,000, so 27.5 millimeters. And this is how much the column shortens under a 600 kN compressive force.